They beat Elk River. They top Tartan. Now they battle Minneapolis North into overtime. Moore is bumped and will shoot a one and one. Not a good foul there by Becker. As Moore is going to go to the free throw line here. You want to play good defense. You want to pressure. But don't give him any free points. Two shots. Moore, of course, is a sophomore. So we'll see if he's got the maturity. Knock these free throws down. It's always a tough situation for anybody, whether you're a senior or junior. The next foul against North will put Osseo in the bonus. So both teams will enjoy the bonus in overtime, although North in the double bonus. Moore missed them both. Rebound inside for Lonnie Robinson. Counts. Meisner double teamed in the corner. And a turnover by Osseo. That's newsworthy. They have had only five all night long. Give credit to these guards for Osseo. They've done a good job of breaking the pressure. Not coughing the ball up. Give North uh, any extra easy layups. They played solid. Taylor hangs, missed it. Rebound Davis with the putback. Nice drive by Taylor, creating at the rim. Couldn't get the fall, but Davis is there to clean up. Reynolds drives, kicks to the corner. Robinson for three, missed it long. Rebound counts. Meisner thought about it. After a watch by Burgess. Three minutes remaining in overtime. Boy, Reynolds has been really quiet in this game since those first couple threes that he hit early on. He's been playing hard, hustling, and getting loose rebounds, but as far as scoring, he's been pretty silent. Becker drives and got it. Eight points for Jesse Becker. We're even at 64. Each team with two timeouts in the overtime. Possession arrow favors Osseo. The lob for Davis. Works against Meisner and got it. Well, when the Polars get it in there, Davis has been unstoppable. And he's slowly piling up big numbers. 17 points for the big man to go with 11 rebounds. Well, he is unstoppable when he gets that deep position on the low block. He just used that little drop step move. Reynolds on the drive, no good. Rebound, Henderson for North. Burgess on the pull-up. Partially blocked by Counts, and the rebound controlled by Meisner. Meisner left alone, and then stripped by Burgess. Big collision down at the rim as Davis went hard to the floor as Meisner was trying to create and get to the basket. A hesitation move, found his lane. Got stripped up from behind there by North player. Meisner will do a little cleanup work. Watch it now, watch oh. Referees, Tom Gillen, Mike Bronson look at each other and say, well, if they're going to clean it up, we might as well let them. 143 remaining in overtime. North by two. Becker throws by Henderson in the finish. We're even at 66. Boy, off the dribble. He is one of the quicker players in this tournament that I've seen. Going to his left, switching back to the right hand. Excellent move. Held to three points through three quarters. Now has 10. Davis backs in against Meisner. Quick hands by Meisner. Broke it up, out of bounds to Osseo. Taylor returns for North with 1.16 remaining. Spinning in the lane, Meisner behind him, slapping the ball out of his hands. 
Robinson helping the ref make that call. Now, in a tie, if you're Osseo, you certainly could play for one shot. However, a minute is a long time to hold the ball. But they are quick enough, especially at the guard positions, to do it. They are going to spread out the floor, kind of a four-corner situation. Look at Mike Davis come out on the floor. See what he can do. I don't think laterally he's going to be able to stay with Reynolds. No, and that's why Tim Tyson chooses Reynolds to hold the ball out near half court. Now the Polars will sit back in the zone. Brett McNeil wanted them to come out and play man, but you almost realize the matchup that you have is Davis on Reynolds. Not the matchup you want one-on-one. -on -one. Davis says bring it on. Yeah, he's ready. He's clapping. He's trying to inspire Reynolds. They're talking a little bit to each other. It looks like even... And now a timeout taken by Osseo with 11 and a half seconds to play. Now, if you're north, you might have to think about replacing Davis in your lineup for this last defensive possession. You can always get him back in there if, there, if there's a foul and you need him for rebounding. That's a tough decision there for Brett McNeil. They can take him out because he's a liability guarding someone on the perimeter. But then again, he's great to have in the lane if one of these quick guards is going to get to the basket and make a drive, he can contest those shots or, or make a big block. So that's a decision that Coach McNeil is going to have to chew over right now. The first overtime final in 12 years. And it comes down to this, a possession for Osseo. Each team had a chance in regulation to win it. And now the Orioles will have the shot at the end of the first overtime. Trying to diagram a play there is Tim Tyson in the Osseo huddle there. I don't see why they couldn't run a little high pick and roll for either Counts or Becker to free up that space, either take an outside shot. I would imagine they're going to try to get to the rim, get a layup or draw some contact, get to the free throw line. They're going to try to wait till seven seconds and then go. Seven seconds virtually ensures that this will be the last possession of the game. They want to run a two-man game, they said, using Meisner and Counts. Here it is. There's the pick. Counts. Cut off nicely, nicely by Burgess. Pulls up the jump shot short. Oh. And we are going double overtime. For the first time ever in the big school final, we will play double overtime. 66 all. And a second overtime coming at the target center. It starts as a simple idea, a new way of looking at things. And before long, that idea becomes so big, so revolutionary, that it changes everything you do. At U.S. Bank, it's the five-star service guarantee. Five ways that you'll get focused and attentive service from every department, every person, every transaction. And that's more than a promise. That's a guarantee. The five-star service guarantee. Welcome to the new U.S. Bank. This changes everything. A tournament memory on Fox 9. We go back to 1972 in the James Gang from St. James. Defeated Melrose in the Class A final. Went 29-0. They won it on a shot from just across half court by Jeff Nessler. They went on then to defeat Moundsview in the playoff. And St. James, the state champs from 1972 a tournament memory here on fox 9 we're creating a new memory right here in the 4a championship game there have only been two other state title games that have gone double overtime both in the small school class back-to-back -back years for bird island lake lillian in 1980 and 81 the big schools have never gone double overtime we're a part of history 
We got front row seats, too. Well, you're already in the books. <laughs> Might be my first appearance. <laughs> we'll sit back and enjoy. I'll, I'll coach you through it. <laughs> I can use some help. If we go many more overtimes, you'll be the guy doing all the talking. I can guarantee you that. Henderson lobs inside Davis. Got his feet set and scores. That was the plan for North from the start. They got away from it in the first half, but Davis now with 10 points in the fourth quarter and overtime alone. And a foul called, and Robinson will go to the line. Burgess whistled for the violation. Went for as long as we've played. No major foul trouble. Henderson for North has four, but he's been playing with four for quite a while. Becker has four for Osseo. You'd hate to see a game as you get into these late overtimes wind up being decided by players that haven't been a part of the game up to that point. That might be a way to attack North is maybe go to Henderson or the man who's, uh, who's being guarded by Henderson. Go to that guy because you know Henderson knows he's got four fouls. He doesn't want to fall out of this game. That might be... An area to really exploit. Another rebound for Davis after Robinson gets one of two. One point lead for North. Burgess looks for Davis. Too tall. Becker couldn't save. Stepped on the baseline. Becker saved that ball, trying to throw it off Davis. It went between the behemoth's legs. Would have been Osseo basketball, but he stepped on the baseline. Henderson, watched by Reynolds. Cameron Taylor on the wing. Davis, double team, but Burgess left alone on the baseline far side. Davis fights through, scores, and Meisner called for the foul. Davis will go to the line. Well, that's one thing Nash Hill's inside guys were doing earlier in the game was fronting Davis. But in that situation, Meisner got stuck behind him, had no choice but to slap him on the wrist, and Davis so big and strong, just slid to the basket and possible three-point play. And he certainly likes it. Davis now with 21 points. Eight in overtime. And the free throw is good for the big man. North goes up on top by four. Biggest lead for either side in the overtime. Counts. Outside Meisner, pump fake, drive, and got it. Leans around Davis for two. Davis was smart not to follow him as he got to the play late. He just stood there and tried to contest the shot as best he could. 16 points for Meisner. All five Orioles starters in double figures. Taylor off balance, got it! Taylor with the circus shot, adjusting in the air and finishing. Counts the other way, off the back rim, rebound Taylor, 2.14 to play. North with the ball and a four-point lead. Too early for the Orioles to go to a foul game, but you've got to start attacking. The lob, the more, no good, tap once, tap twice. Davis can't get it, long rebound of Taylor for three. Back rim, no good, rebound counts. Osseo continuing to push the basketball. Reynolds for three, short. Rebound to the floor. Henderson has it for the pullers. Henderson splits the defenders. And then is fouled by Robinson. Two shots coming for Kevin Henderson, who hit two straight free throws at the end of regulation to give North a one-point lead. Tough situation. Robinson trying to get close to Henderson and create a turnover there, but got a little too close, and it was a foul. Here's the drive by Taylor. Boy, and that possession that followed, the long rebound came out to Taylor, and I know he's thinking this is the knockout punch. If I drill this three, it's a seven-point game, but as tempting as that shot is, might have been better to just hang out of the ball and run some clock. 
timeout for Osseo as Henderson gets the first free throw. North's lead is five. The story in the overtime and down the stretch in regulation has been James Davis. The big man for the Polars has taken over the game on the glass and his ability to get loose on the post up inside. That's his move right there. Dribbling into the, the middle of the lane, drop step to the baseline, finishing on off the glass. Kept his balance there. Observe what's going on around him. Drop step, three-point play. And Davis shouting to the basketball gods that <laughs> he's bringing a state title to the Polars. They're 95 seconds away, leading by five in the second overtime. That's the thing with good guard play like North has. Sometimes it's it's easy when you have a lot of talent to, uh, talent to, at those per, uh, perimeters positions to kind of get away from feeding the ball into the big guy inside. And at times I think they, they try to do too much, the North guards, but they've really done a great job of getting the ball to the seven footer here to finish off this game. And he's delivering big time. Henderson to the line for his second free throw. He's been perfect at the stripe so far tonight. Second one off, no good. But an offensive rebound for Jared Moore. Lazy pass, tipped and saved by Henderson. Moore cross court for Taylor. Now the Orioles need to attack. They do, and they get a steal. Becker spins, oh. shovels, Robinson for two. Oh, a beautiful spin move by Becker. Doing it quickly. Three-point polar lead. Moore, hanging jump shot. No good. Davis has it, goes back up, scores, and a foul inside. All night long, the Polars have dominated the glass at both ends of the floor. And it might be the deciding factor here in overtime. Moore with the shot. There's Davis. Rebounding like an angry hippopotamus. <laughs> Puts the ball up. Three-point play opportunity. In and out, no good. Rebound Robinson. Here's Becker. Pulls up for three. Back iron, no good. Rebound Taylor. Now the Orioles probably need to put him on the line with just 46 seconds remaining. And a foul called against Luke Anton. A good look for a good three-point shooter. Becker hits 40% from outside the arc this year. Tonight has not been his night from long range. He's hit just two of 10. He caught the ball here at the midcourt line right in front of us, and you could just tell he was eyeing up that three-point shot. Unfortunately for the Orioles, that kicked off North basketball. There's still time left in this game. Taylor hits that second shot. A three-point shot can bring a team back into the game quickly, as we all know. Here's Counts for three. Short. Back outside. Counts with it again. Whips to the wing. Becker drives. Score! Oh, and good for two. Timeout Osseo. North by five. Beautiful play. Driving the baseline. The little man getting up to the rim. A little reverse layup. Boy, fantastic play. Circus shot. Little shot fake getting around Davis. He's an inspiration for every guy that isn't born with a basketball body. Yeah, exactly. You know, only five foot eleven. That could be a generous height as, as well. But he is quick as lightning getting up the baseline. Normally he's a Pretty consistent outside shooter. He struggled a little bit tonight. Although in the second half, he's been let loose a little bit more and freed himself up to do some things, but he's a great creator. Jared. James 
right there on the elbow. Here, that's wet. The Orioles will obviously play for the steal, but if you can't get it quickly, you have to foul nearly immediately. Big difference between high school basketball and college or pro is that the clock does not stop after a made basket. So when Osseo scores, the pollers can essentially allow five, six, seven seconds to run off the clock, and Osseo does not have a timeout remaining. Davis is fouled immediately and will go to the line to shoot two. You might think that this is a good guy to foul, but he's knocked down a couple crucial free throws here in the second half. He's got pretty nice touch at the charity strike. Davis tonight is two for five at the strike. One for two here in the overtime. Meisner has fouled out of the game. 16 points on the night for Meisner. Had a big third quarter, and he scored eight of those points. First free throw good by Davis. The polar lead is a half dozen. Oscar's going to get the ball in here and push, push it down the floor quickly. Doesn't matter if you get a two or three, but you got to get something. Preferably a three, obviously. Becker. Block inside by Davis. Henderson for more. He wanted the slam, couldn't get it. Burgess has it stripped. 14 seconds to go. Counts for three. No good. Rebound, Burgess. Moore will get another try. Missed it again, but Burgess taps it in. And for the first time since 1997, the Polars are the best in the big school class. Interesting finish. <laughs> Good job by the North Polars, another state championship. Boy, I give credit to this Osseo Oriole team. They played their hearts out. No doubt about it. Brett McNeil reached the finals twice as a player, twice went home short of the ultimate goal. But now in his first trip here as a head coach, he and the Polars leave as state champions. Boy, that was a marathon game. <laughs> Very entertaining. James Davis, boy, he played a huge role to finish off this game for Minneapolis North. He really played tough. Had some huge baskets, tip-ins, rebounds, knocked down some important free throws as well. And on a night where he was the focal point of the game plan, he had scored only five points in the first half. He came on in the second half and dominated this basketball game, particularly in the fourth quarter and overtime. We had you, man. Now for, All right. for some comments from the winner, here's Ryan Lund. Okay, guys, I got the big man right here. I don't think anybody's been able to to slow him down or stop him until this moment right here. How does it feel, James? Oh my God, this feels great. Nobody knows how good this feels right now. We, we deserve this. All the controversy and all the pains and bruises and bumps and injuries and everything we didn't have this season. We deserved it. So thanks to the Lord above, he gave it to us. What got into you in those overtimes? No, uh, nothing, my teammates told me I'm, I'm the most dominant player in the state, so I need to come out and play like, you know, uh, everybody think I deserve first Metro all team or Mr. Basketball candidate, and, and I figured I did too, so I said if they didn't want to give it to me, I was going to show them that I deserved it, so 
came out and played. And it's all thanks to my great teammates. All right, James, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Thank you. All right, Anthony and Kevin. All right, thank you very much, Ryan. For the awards presentations, here once again is public address announcer Bob Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the awards ceremony will be conducted by representatives of the board of directors of the Minnesota State High School League.